Hallelujah. I bless your holy name, O God. Hallelujah. I praise your name, O God. I bless your holy name. You are worthy to be praised, mighty God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy, O God, to receive all the glory. All the glory, mighty God. I love you, Lord. I lift up your holy name. I bless your name, Lord, because you are good. Thank you, God, for your love, your mercy towards our lives each day, each day, oh God. So we just bless your name now. We bless your holy name. Lord, our lips will never cease to give you thanks and to give you praise because you deserve it. You truly deserve it, Lord, for all of your benefits towards our lives thank you God thank you God thank you Lord thank you Lord we bless your name thank you Lord thank you Lord Lord even as we gather again today before your throne oh God just lifting up your name magnifying your name because you are good Lord, I pray your blessing upon our lives today, even as we take in your word, your word, O oh God, that is food for our lives, your word that represents nourishment to our spirits, O oh God. Speak to us today. Speak to us in an unusual way. Cause us, O oh God, to hear you differently today. Speak to each individual heart in the way that we learn, oh God, in the way that we can grasp what you're saying to us today. Lord, I magnify your name because you are good. Bless your people, oh God. Take charge of the airwaves and cause your word to go forth with power, with anointing and with clarity so that your word will reach the hearts of your people, oh God, and cause transformation to take place. It will cause change to take place. It will cause us, oh God, to think about our lives and think about the way that we have been going about our walk with you. Because, Lord, our desire is to draw closer, closer to you. That's our prayer. That's our prayer, Lord. So we thank you right now because you're already here. You're already here in our midst to bless us, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do for us more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning, friends. Good morning, this is Diane. And I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I'm coming to you today with another word from the word of God. And it is my hope that after we get finished today, you will be blessed. You will be uplifted. You will be encouraged. And you will feel the strength of God to carry on in your day. I'm just excited about the goodness of God. I'm excited about all that he has been doing in our lives. Every single morning, he has given us his breath, his breath of life. And we should use it, friends, to give him glory, to honor him. Because it doesn't matter what we're going through in our lives. God will get the glory from it all. If we just allow him to take us through. If we give him the reins of our lives. He will take us through. Because that's what he specializes in. Sometimes it's difficult for some to understand that. Or to grasp it. Or to see it. Because you know the fire. It's hot. Nobody likes to go through fire. Nobody likes to be burned but I'm telling you friends if you just submit submit to what God is doing you will thank him afterwards you will say thank you Lord for taking me through that because if I hadn't gone through that I would not be where I am today some believe that this may be the lowest point in their lives and I can tell you friends yes there are times when he literally throws you down right and that sometimes is to humble us and to keep us at a place where we can continue to hear him. If we move on with our own lives, with our own thing, he, he knows exactly 
how to get our attention. He did it to me. He did it to me, friends. So I know, I know. I remember going through this very rough patch in church. And y'all hear me say it all the time because some believe that, you know, this road that we're walking with Christ, it's a smooth road. No, it's not. Or it's supposed to be. No, no, he didn't have it easy either. And I was going through all of this drama in my life. I call it drama because now that I look back, I say, truly, you know, this was some serious drama going on and it just crushed my life. It crushed me to the point where I attended this event. I attended this event that the Church of God of Prophecy was having. I wasn't a member yet. I, I went to one of the local conventions and Bishop Hutchinson preached that Sunday night. I'll never forget it. He preached a simple word. And at the end of that simple word, it's like the Lord just did something to my life. And I ended up on the floor. I have to say I end up on the floor because when you respond to an altar call, you, you go and everybody's standing and everybody perhaps is lifting their hands, whatever it is that they're doing to receive what God was saying to them. And that's how I started out. But by the time I catch myself, as we say it, you know, in the BVI, by the time I catch myself, I'm on the ground. I'm on the ground and the Lord is speaking to me and I'm hearing him very clearly, very clearly because he had to literally throw me down, man, so that he could have my attention. And the Lord started to speak and he said, where you are now, which he was referring to the fact that I was down. I was literally at rock bottom now. So I could hear him clearly. He said, when you get up from this floor, you will only go up from here. You will only rise in me because I'm about to catapult your life to another level. The Lord spoke that to me, friends. And I'm saying to you today, my life has never been the same since never it was a defining moment in my life one that I will never forget and the reason why I'm sharing this it's because I the Lord is just leading me now to minister to somebody who has hit rock bottom you have hit rock bottom you have tried everything really and you're in church you're a Christian you're doing things God's way. Well, that's exactly what you're thinking to yourself. So why has all of this overtaken your life? And I'm saying, friends, relax. Relax. God's got you. He's got you so tight that you can never, ever squeeze out of his grip right now because he's training you. He's training your life. He's making you tough. He's giving you these situations that when you overcome them, listen, there are some other things that's going to come your way. You probably will laugh because you're like, really devil? Is that the best you've got? Because after you've been through certain things, other things just don't move you anymore. They don't shake you anymore. You used to be timid and afraid and the Lord just gives you boldness and courage. And you just launch out and do exactly what he has commissioned you to do. All right, so you hang in there, stick with God. Stick with God and watch him work wonders in your life. Wonders, I'm telling you. I'm at the stage right now where I just don't worry. Some say, well, that's not possible because we go through things. Yes, we do, but I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to rely on him, friends, for the slightest thing. Now the Lord is literally answering prayers before I even pray them because he knows the desires of my heart and he knows exactly what I need. So I don't worry and I don't fret. I, I, I mentioned to a friend yesterday, I said, I don't understand. And you know, this might sting some people, but guess what? I have to say what God says. I said, I do not understand how some people get involved in some of these uh, 
groups that they're in, these groups that promise them this and promise them that, this brotherhood, this sisterhood, that, this and that. Oh, we help each other. The devil is a liar. Everything we need is in God. You don't need to be a part of any brotherhood or any sorority to get anything in life because God has it all. He has proven that to me. We don't need to get wrapped up and tied up in foolishness to say we want success in life. We want power. We want all this. God has it. It's in God. We don't need to get involved in all of that stuff. Sacrificing people and animals and this whole heap of junk that's going on around us, even in the body of Christ, because some have brought it into the church and nobody's saying anything, but the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The Lord has everything that we need, everything that we need, and he supplies our needs. So all we have to do is trust him, don't go join up with any group. You understand? Don't go and join anything. The Lord is speaking about this because this is not what I plan to say. The Lord is saying to his people, come out from among them and be separate. Do not join with these groups. Some of them are downright evil, but they present something else on the front. It's a facade. You understand? I'm covered under the blood of Jesus right now. So just let that devil know for me, he cannot intimidate the true people of God. You understand? Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Be courageous. Be bold for God. He will protect you. He will cover you. Some people have gotten themselves so deeply into these things. They don't know how to come out. And I'm talking about church people. Listen, God and any other God does not work together. It doesn't work. It's either God or man. You understand? Some of these men walking around like little demigods. Because they believe they have power to do this. Power to, you know, give people promotions. Power to kill. Power to let live. Really? All of that belongs to our God. He has that power. Some do not give life, but they want to take it away. Well, I rebuke that spirit of murder, even now as I'm speaking, in the name of Jesus. Those who are plotting and scheming under the influence of the devil, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. My God, what are we doing what are we doing in the body of Christ? What are we doing? Getting involved in all of these things. Pastors doing it. Some undercover because if the congregation ever know that they're involved in this. Church empty. People scatter. Money done. You understand? Check out your leaders, friends. What are they into? What are they involved with? Who is leading them? Listen, they could shatter their mama and flatter their papa all day, all night. That doesn't move God if they are involved in wickedness. Wickedness in high places. But I pray that the Lord will expose it even in the British Virgin Islands where I live. Because I do believe that the Lord has his hand on this nation. But we're veering away and nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody coming and prophesying revival and peace. But the Lord is saying at this time, no, something coming if we're not change. You understand? I, I mean, I, I, I don't even know, you know how I get there. But the Lord is saying, say this. When we say peace, peace. It's sudden destruction. You know why? Because of the covert operations. Those things that man cannot see with their naked eyes. The Lord is saying, I am seeing it. I am seeing the wickedness. I'm smelling the stench. It looks like things are calm right now, but they are not. He's saying all is not well in Zion. BVI, wake up. All is not well in Zion. He said that there's a false sense of calm over the BVI right now. But he said he's about to shake this place. 
if we don't get rid of the covert operations. Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Hey. Ah. Oh, my God. Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Holy Father. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Jesus. I would like to speak a word directly to the leadership of this nation right now under the unction of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is saying that I'm seeing everything that is taking place, everything. Do not think that you can hide anything from me. Do not think that you can come before the people and fool them. Do not think that you can stand as a representative of me with all the covert things that continues to permeate this nation. Jesus, speak, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, Jesus. Oh, my God. The Lord is saying that I gave you a chance to lead this nation. And if you believe that you can go into those offices and do what you want, you have another guest coming. Watch out. I am watching. Watch out. I am watching. Keep your hands clean. Do not meddle in foolishness. I'm seeing it all. It's not hidden from me. It's not hidden from me. The people may not know, but I know. That's what God is saying. That's what God is saying. I do apologize <laughs> to those who are from overseas right now that this may not apply to, but I have to do what God says. I, I had everything set up to go one way. You will see what the topic was supposed to be. And I do believe the Lord still wants to remind us that this is the day that he has made. Oh yes, my God, <laughs> my hands are literally shaking. This has never happened to me before, but I'm just saying, people of the BVI, rise up. Rise up in God. Do what God says. Listen to his voice. He will speak to us specifically. You wait until after this Easter season has passed. We're in prayer even now for this week because huh, the adversary has plans for this week but I pray that we will turn to God in such a way in such a way this week this holy week here that those plans will be aborted there is nothing like going against the grain friends I, I, I don't enjoy this I don't enjoy when everybody else is speaking peace the Lord says uh-uh no peace is coming if they turn the Lord consistently is calling for a turning in the BVI. And many believe that that turning went away because, you know, the government changed. No, no, no. The Lord is saying no. He still requires us to live according to his will, his purpose. He has his hand on this nation and we will see troubles if we become lackadaisical and passive and slack and we allow any and anything to come into this country, the Lord said he will help us if we put our trust in him. And that has to start with leadership. Spiritual leadership, arise. Now is the time to arise. Counsel the government wisely. Godly counsel is what's needed right now. Godly counsel, the wisdom of God, is what is needed now. Not what has always been or what sounds right in our own eyes. No, 
it's what God says. When the Lord says, say this, say exactly what he has asked you to say. Stop trying to look for handouts. Everything we need is in God. Everything we need. That's what he keeps saying. Because there are people who are turning to other avenues because some say they can't wait on God any longer. He taking too long. So they're taking things in their own hands and they're becoming a part of all of these things, these groups that are promising power, that are promising all these promotions. And even if they have to sacrifice a family member, they will do it. They will do it because they want power so badly. It's clear. The influence of witchcraft still looms and hangs over this nation. But the Lord is saying, I'm seeing it all. I'm seeing it all. My God. Lord, help me today. Friends, trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. This is the day that he has made. And we should be rejoicing and being glad in it. But I'm saying, British Virgin Islands, wake up. Don't fall asleep now. Don't relax. Because an upturning is coming if we don't pray and if we don't get right. All right? Yeah. Let's not make these islands a harbor for evil. Let's cut it out. Those who are Christians, those who are genuine about the move of God, stand up. Don't be afraid. Don't compromise. You understand? Now is not the time to be messing with the enemy. Do not mess with the devil. Stay on the Lord's side and he will protect you. He will guard you. I'm trying to kill him enough time. But I come against him now with the authority that the Lord has given me. And I say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. And you will not have these British Virgin Islands, nor the people in it. Cover me, friends. Cover me, please. Because I must do what God has asked me to do. I must say what he has asked me to say. So let's just <laughs> abandon all the other plans that we have and zero in to what God is doing and what he's saying. Yes, revival will come. All of those good things that were prophesied will come. But the Lord is saying at this time, get right, BVI. It seems like all is well, but I'm saying it is not. And that's God. Because I in myself cannot know this. When I look around, oh, oh, the sun is shining. Everything looks beautiful. I did a little video yesterday about how beautiful things are. But then the Lord checked me this morning and said, no, say this, say this one, say this part. Because there are some things that are going on at all levels. And I've seen it and it has come up as a stench. The people may not know, but I know. Be careful, leaders, spiritual leaders, political leaders. Be very careful in this season how you tread. Be very careful, very careful. Don't think for a moment that the Lord is not interested in the affairs of this nation. Do not even let us go there with God. We saw what happened almost two years ago and he speared us. When they came with body bags, they had to carry them back to wherever they, they brought them from because of the goodness of God. So we know what adversity is. Oh, yes. We know what storms of life look like, literally and figuratively. You understand? Let's not play with God. Let's not play with God. This is not a bunch of Christians over in a corner trying to Christianize the entire BVI. No, this is about what God wants to do in this nation. 
we can be a godly nation. Oh yes, we can. So let's put away all this facade and oh, with everybody praying. But are we turning? Are we turning? Yes, we're praying, man. Praying is good. Prayer is good. But what are we doing? If those who are calling the prayers and doing that are involved in wickedness, what sense does that make? What sense does it make? Calling the nation to prayer, 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 and not turning. Lead by example. Lead by godly example. Can't be living anyhow and calling nation to prayer. Let's be careful that we're not playing with God. Let's not do that. Let's be real. Let's be genuine and cry out to God. There has to be a genuine burden, not tradition. Not what's expected. Let's do this thing, people of God. Let's do this thing. And it starts with each of us as individuals. Let's cut out the hate and the backbiting and the gossiping and the foolishness. You know what I realize? These things are keeping people's lives back. Some people are wondering why their lives are not prospering. It has nothing to do with what you think it has to do with. It's that individual commitment to God where you rely on God and you say, you know, God, I just want to live for you. I just want to do your will. Do not be deliberate in your wickedness against others and then expect the Lord to wink at that. Let's live right. Let's be an example. Let's stop hiding behind our titles and our posts and our little positions. God is not fooled by any of that. He sees past all of that. We can't fool him. Friends, God is not mocked. And whatever man sows, especially in this season, that he shall also reap. Let everyone that has an ear hear what the Lord is saying today. All right? I have to pray now. Because the way that I intended to go, I'm telling you, I did not change this thing today. God did that. Because what I do, I stay in his presence and I say, Lord, what do you need me to do? What do you need me to say? And sometimes he gives me all of that, like the day before and, you know, it's set. But today he said, shift, shift, shift. And if you allow yourself to be led by God, he can shift you at any time. Just be ready. All right? My prayer now is that the Lord will cause us to see ourselves the way he sees us. Because all is not well in Zion. All is not well in Zion. It, there's a, a, a false sense of security that still lingers in the atmosphere over the BVI. And the Lord is saying, not so. He needs our hearts, not our lips. He's tired of the lip service. Well, you know, that's a figure of speech because our God is never tired. He's never weary. He's merciful. Let's not take his grace for granted. All right? Let's not take God's grace and his mercy for granted where we believe that our hidden things and our hidden covert operations the Lord is not seen. He will judge from top to bottom. All right, let's be careful. Let's pray. Father, I bless your holy name today. I thank you, God, for your word to our lives. Lord, you're the one that shifted this word today. But Lord, I pray that your people have heard you. Even those, oh God, who it would seem like this does not apply to them. I pray, oh God, that something would have gripped their hearts and it would cause them to turn or to change, to allow you, oh God, to transform their lives, even for such a time as this. Because, Lord, you are raising up a remnant. It's a people, oh God, who will set themselves towards you and you alone. Mighty God, help us in this nation, O oh God. Lord, I pray for the leadership of this nation. 
I pray, O oh God, for the premier. Lord, I pray that you would give him wisdom beyond his years. Lord, help him to understand that you care about the affairs of this nation. Lord, give him people around him who can advise him from you. People who speak your heart, O oh God. Not those who are looking for a handout. Not those who are working on behalf of the enemy. Lord, anchor his heart in you, O oh God. Help him not to turn to any other source. Because you're his source, mighty God. You're his source. Whatever it is, O oh God, whatever the enemy would try to use to bring him down, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be that if there's anything in his own life that he needs to turn over to you, O oh God, that he does it and he does it now. He does it speedily. Because, Lord, you are about to show up in this nation once again. So, Lord, help the premier to see you, O oh God. So many people will want to gather around him to advise him about this and that. But, Lord, let them be people of godly wisdom. Because it's only your wisdom, O oh God, that will take us beyond what we can see now. So, Lord, surround his life with those whom you have ordained and let the others scatter by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Scatter those with hidden agendas. Scatter now in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who are on his cabinet, my God, my God, <laughs> Jesus, only you, O oh God, can turn the hearts of men. So turn their hearts, O oh God, towards you, every one of them. Turn their hearts towards you, O oh God, where they would abandon anything else that's unlike you. Because now is the time. And it's not your will, O oh God, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. They're not exempt, O oh God, from your grace and mercy. They too, they too, O oh God. Jesus, my God, help us, Lord. Lord, every single member of the House of Assembly, every one of them, Lord, I pray that they will see the need to look to you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Every one of them. All those who seek to represent the people in this nation. Lord, I pray that you would captivate their hearts because that's where it starts, oh God, in the heart. What is being conceived in the heart. Because Lord, if godliness and wisdom is not there, only wickedness will come forth so Lord we cancel every plan of the enemy let every single one of them who is involved in anything oh God that's unlike you Lord let them turn to you now before it's too late my God Lord I pray for the other leaders governor deputy governor all those who come together to lead this land. May this land be led your way. Oh God, whatever it is that they're trying to impose on this nation, that's not godliness. We reject it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We refuse, oh God, to accept anything that's unlike you. Mighty God, somebody has to stand in the gap and say no, no, no to ungodliness, no to wickedness, even in high places. 
But Lord, you're the one that turns the heart of the king. So you can do anything. So Lord, we commit each of them into your hands right now. Your capable hands. Lord, give some of them restless nights until they turn their lives over to you. Because only you, oh God, can help them. There's a void that you have created in each of us, oh God, that only you can fill. To those who are trying to fill it with other things. Give them an encounter with you, God. Jesus, we bless your name now. Spiritual leaders, Lord, you have called leaders to stand up for you. Lord, let them do that. Because, Lord, you have already showed me that some of the candlesticks shall be removed if they do not line up with your word. So, Lord, cause them now to understand where you're leading this land and the role that they play, Lord. Let those whom you have ordained from before the foundation of the world to be men of wisdom, women of wisdom, give godly advice throughout the nation. Let their voices be heard, O oh God. Give them that platform to speak, thus saith the Lord, with boldness, with courage, without fear of man. Let them rise up now, O oh God. Some of them are too silent. Jesus, help your people, God. Help your people, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, and the people. Lord, let their hearts be turned to you as well. Lord, let righteousness prevail over this nation so that the success that we seek individually and corporately, O oh God, will be found in you and in you alone. So we break down all of these groups, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit captivate hearts, O oh God, so that people will do the right thing. Thank you, Lord. Bless us, O oh God. Yes, but help us not to just seek your hand, but also to seek your face. That's what you call for now, for us to seek your face. Because you did so much, oh God, for us. Thank you, Lord, you died for the sins of the whole world. Help us to accept what you have done, to accept that gift. As many as possible, oh God, to accept that gift. Lord, I give you praise and I give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless your name today. Thank you, Lord. Listen, friends, people of God, especially, this is for the people of God in the BVI. Let's get our priorities right. Let's get our priorities in order. I'm going to mention something, and this is not to bring any secular movement glory, but just to say what the Lord has laid on my heart regarding this matter. There's a particular secular artist that's planning to come here Father's Day weekend. I'm not speaking against anybody's event. Just listen, people of God. Some of you have become very excited about this. And listen, you can do whatever you want because the Lord has given each of us free will. But if you say you love God, if you say you love God, this is not the type of event that should have you excited. You understand? Let's pray. That's what we need to do. Let's pray for God's will to be done in this nation. That's what should get us excited doing God's will. All right? The Lord said we live in the world, but we are not of the world. It's okay to minister to those who are not saved. And there's a way that we do that. But we don't have to go and sit 
and carouse like we're trying to prove a point to somebody. No, this is not an event for secular and Christians. It is not. You understand? So pray, seek the Lord. If you're planning to present yourself at this event because they, they, it's conscious lyrics. Listen, I'm from Jamaica. And I know certain things about the ins and outs of what some call conscious lyrics and all of that. But listen, you know what we need in this nation now more than anything? Prayer. Okay? Because there are some things that the Lord is about to do. That if we don't get ourselves in alignment, we're going to be in trouble. I'm not the one telling you this. It's what God said. So let's get our priorities right. Let's fix some stuff. All right? Seek the Lord. Get excited about Jesus and see if your life wouldn't turn around. These are not the events that turn your life around. All right? Everybody free to do what they want. That's a disclaimer that I've made. But watch and see <clears throat> what will improve about your life just for attending these kind of events. What will improve about your life? Check God. Okay? Let Him lead and direct you. Let Him lead and direct you. The adversary is subtle. He's subtle and he knows exactly how to draw in, especially those who are already lingering behind. Don't get left behind. Push up yourself in God. You understand? Say, so Lord, here I am. Use me. Use me for your glory. That should be our prayer as Christians in this nation. All right? So I leave that there. <laughs> be guided accordingly. Let your conscience be your guide. All right? Let's seek the Lord. Let's not only wait until the hurricane season. Oh, interesting. Hurricane season starts the beginning of June. And when we should be praying, we get getting all excited about secular stuff. Let's be careful with that. Because we can't be saying, Lord, Lord, over here. And we're saying something else over there. That's hypocrisy. Let's be true. Let's be genuine. And I pray that the Holy Spirit convicts some hearts that have already made a decision to attend this event. Christians I'm talking about. The world will do what they want. You understand? And we are called to be an example. And if they see us jumping up with them, we cannot tell them about Christ the next day. They will laugh. They will say, you hypocrite. Weren't we over there jumping up together last night? Where you going? Who are you talking to, my son? Let's not do that, friends. Let's not spoil our witness. Let them laugh at us and call us holy rollers and whatever names they give Christians who are living for God. I'm not talking about those who are playing. You understand? Be careful. Be very careful. All right. May the Lord bless you today. Each of you. May the Lord bless your life and just cause you to think about what he has said today. All right. May the Lord truly bless you and fill you with his goodness where you don't feel that urge to go wandering after other gods, but just to serve him in spirit and in truth. Yes, if you're called by the name of Christ, serve him. He has everything you need everything all right trust in the lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding but in all of your ways all all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path and like i always say until we meet again in this fashion take care